Welcome back to another tutorial. This time we're going to go over the format node in Logix. This is useful for formatting data into a nice uh, text-based representation for data collection, UIs, uh, or displays, things like that. I'm going to hop over to Smooth POV. This is a request from a few people that had questions about it. So H3 uh, and SHFR from, uh, well, Hamish from SHFR, sorry. So to get started, I've got myself a Logix node, uh, Logix tooltip, sorry. I'm going to open up the node menu and I'm going to go to string, which is the string folder, and then double click on format. When you spawn in format, you'll notice that it displays a little bit weirdly. This is fine, just hit plus and it'll start rendering normally. The uh, node has a string input and a string output to start with, and I'll talk through both of those. So the output is the formatted string. So I'm going to pull this out here and click secondary, and then you'll see it displays. And then for the input, I'm going to pull out a uh, input string here, and I'm just going to type in the word test. And then you'll see test comes out the other side, but that's not too powerful. Where it becomes powerful is when you start playing with these parameters, which are of object data type, this beige color. You may be unclear what goes into this beige color because you might not have seen it before. It's certainly the first time I've seen it whilst working with Logix. The answer is pretty much any data type. So if we go back to um, our Logix tooltip, uh, node menu and we go to the input folder and select int we can then spawn in int type in the number four and drag this in and you'll see it casts so there's a int can be converted into an object and it's going straight in but nothing's happening and the four isn't displaying here and that's because we need to signal to the format node where where should it place the four so here we're going to open up our format string we're going to hit space and then we're going to type shift open curly brace zero close curly brace and you'll see the four is now appearing here the zero here refers to the first input to the node because computers start at zero if we added another number two and put this in and then change the format string to have zero and then one you'll now see we get both numbers and we can change these independently so here's seven let me change that to five and that format nicely. We can also mess with the ordering here. So if I replaced the zero with a one and the one with a zero, see they now render the wrong way around or a different way around. Over here, I have a setup I set up earlier, which uh, has a bunch of data types inserted. And so you can see all the data types that are supported. So here we have an int, uh, here's a float, here's a string, here's a bool, here's a time zone. Uh, it pretty much supports any data type. We could keep going here, but I didn't want to push it. And here's the output string. We've got two, I'm not sure why, but there we go. And you can see here, I've just added a bunch of commas and it's formatting everything nicely. The time's even counting up. So as the uh, seconds increase, it's going to increase. So that's how the format node works with all these objects. You can go further than this though. And so I'm going to go back to my original setup and demonstrate that here. And the easiest way to play with that is to start using float numbers. So I'm going to get rid of my integers here. And I'm going to change this back to just being zero. So zero. And then we're going to put in a float. Now floats by their nature have uh, decimal places in them. So if I do a bunch of decimal places here, you'll see that it's truncating them to uh, one, two, three, four, five, six decimal places. And it's also rounding and the rounding's occurring because I'm exceeding the float number here. But we could also change this up. So here in the format string, if I put zero and then after the zero, I put a colon and then the letter F, you'll see that we by default have gone down to two decimal places and it's rounded. So two five gets rounded to two six because it's two five five. If you remember your rounding rules from math class or something. After the F, you can also put a number. So if I put three here, you'll see we now have three decimal places and it's rounding to three decimal places. I could put four here, five here, and so on, and it would increase the amount of decimal places that appeared. That's not all you can do though. There are various different um, letters that you can put after this colon. I'm gonna to refer to the documentation that you'll find in the link in the description, which is a Microsoft documentation page on how this um, how the, the letters work. And the reason behind this is because all this node does is pass the format string and the input data down to a common c -sharp function which formats a string. So the letters um, match up even though this is logic and not c -sharp. We'll go over a few more letter combinations here though so you can see them at, at, at working. So for example here, if I do the, the letter C, 
you'll see it now has formatted the uh, floating point number as a currency. Uh, my computer is set to the English locale, so Neos picked that up and formatted it in the English locale to pounds, because England uses pounds. I am currently living in America, but because my computer is set to the ENGB locale, I get a pound symbol here. Again, with the C, I can specify the decimal places here, so I could say zero, and that's stripped off the two six, and it's rounded all the way up to um, one pound because the two isn't high enough to round, because the uh, five gets rounded to three, and then the three can't be rounded up to two, so it doesn't round it all the way. There are also other characters, so we could go for, um, this will make more sense if I do 0 0.5, and then I can do 0 colon p, and now you'll see it's getting represented as 50%, and that's because uh, it's based on a number from 0 to 1, with 1 being 100% and 0 being 0%, so 0 0.5 is 50% here. Again, that's got two decimal places after it that we don't really need, so I can go ahead and put 0 here, and you'll get, see you'll get rid of those decimal places. I can also do the same for um, hexadecimal numbers here, so if I enter, um, let's enter 9, and then we can change the format string here to x, uh, or is it capital X? Uh, let's try an int instead of a float here. Maybe it's having issues with the, the rounding. And then 9, and then 10 should go to A. There we go. Looks like it's having issues with the float. So here you'll see that it, when I use the X prefix, it's now rendering it as a hexadecimal number. So the way hexadecimal works is it goes zero uh, to nine, and then once you go to 10, it uses the letters A all the way up to F, or then starts another digit. So here, if I put in 14, you'll see it's E, 15 will be F, and then 16, you'll see will be 10. It's a hexadecimal is called base 16. It's a little bit to get your head around. You can also go ahead and uppercase the x here, and it will turn it to uppercase hexadecimal. So if I put in 10 in again here, you'll see it's a instead of lowercase a. That's hexadecimal for you. Uh, the format node can also handle dates. For dates, we're going to have to change up the setup and remove a bunch. So I'm going to get rid of these, and we're going to go ahead and input UTC now again. So input UTC now. And we'll get rid of the x prefix, and you'll see it's rendering the date just like we saw over there. But again, I can specify the string. There's a bunch of date strings. I'll link a second documentation page that's particularly about date strings here, but I'll go over a few just to show you. For example, here if I do y, 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 you'll see it's now rendering just the year, which is 2020, as a uh, four-digit version. If I do two, it will do it as two digits. It's 2020. If it was 2021, that would say 21. I can also do uh, M for the month name, or MM. Not sure what MM does. Uh, there's a bunch of strings here, and it's better to refer to them in the documentation. There we go. Capital case MM will do the month number. You can also do D, uh, DD, which will do the date. It's the ninth. Remember, it's the ninth in UTC. So. Uh, if you're in America watching this video um, on the 8th, you might be confused, but remember it's it's using the UTC time zone. You can also do our hour, and you'll see it's uh, 01. I'm going to convert this to local time to display the difference between lowercase h and uppercase h. So to do that, we're going to go to math date time. I'll link the date time tutorial I did so you can understand these nodes a little bit better. But if we just do two local time, it'll be in my time zone. And now we say it says 6, which is uh, 6 p.m., but I use the 24-hour clock. And so to get that, we do capital H, and now you'll see it says 18, which is a 24-hour clock. I can also do, oh, MMM is minutes. When I didn't know before, it was minutes. I had that uh, another time. And then SS will be the seconds. You can see that's counting up. You can also do Z, and Z will be on the documentation, but be bear away that Z doesn't work as you would expect. Z displays the time zone which this date is in, and you'll see right now it's displaying negative 7. Don't use Z too much because um, what it's doing here is using the time zone of my locale, 
and not the time zone of the inputted time. So if you were to, you know, add an hour to this, remove an hour from this, it doesn't have any concept of time zones here, so it'll always just display the locale. So I would just avoid using the time zone here. There's also some shortcuts that will present it in certain ways. I'm not sure of all of them. If you do D, capital D like this, it'll do 8th of March 2020. I think you can do S and it'll represent it as an ISO standard where you can see year, month, day, T, which is the uh, distinction between the date and the time portion and then the time. Uh, there's others, I think G might do it. Yep, G does that. So you see here, um, day, month, year, time. This is an English date format. Um, American date format would have it. Maybe capital G does American date. Nope. I'm not sure which one would do um, the American date format where you do month and day. Uh, but uh, check the documentation, I think, below. That's it for the format node. Um, there's a lot more power here that I'm not showing. You can do a lot more with these format strings that I'm also not showing, and that's because I don't find them useful. There are things like padding and uh, alignment-related stuff. I don't use those too much. Um, I would rather just, if I wanted, say, padding, I would just put spaces before it like this. It's a lot easier. Um, do bear in mind that this node can be used for things like uh, comma-separated values as well. We've shown that over here. So if you wanted to export data to like an Excel format, then you could use this to create that. If I do this, it's representing all the data with a comma between it. So I could export this as a file, check my file exporting tutorial, I'll link that below. And uh, then you could open this in Excel and in Excel you'd get a column which says four, 2.45, Apple, true, and then the date. Um, I use this in the Spider Island experiment to format the data that comes out of it. I'll link to the um, announcement about the spider and experiment where we talk about it um, so you can see what that was all about that's the format node i hope that was helpful i will see you next time